What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, today I'm going to show you how to move a character along a spline, it's going to be a very easy view to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is go into the content browser, right click and create a new blueprint class. This will be an actor, and let's just call this BP underscore spline, you know, whatever you want to call it. Let's go ahead and open this up. So in here, what we need to do is add a new component, and this will be the spline component under utility. Let's go ahead and hit enter. For now, we are not gonna change anything on here. We're gonna leave it as it is. Uh, but now what we're going to do is select the default scene root and add a skeleton mesh, which will be, of course, our character itself. Now, it doesn't need to be under spline. It can just be, like I just mentioned, attach it in just the blueprint itself, okay, under the scene root. It doesn't need to be under the spline. So now, uh, selecting character, we can just go ahead and find our, for example, queen money. The queen simple, sorry. So I can just put that like that. And then we can just go ahead and put this minus 89, so it's standing there. Now, the other thing will be also to minus 90 here, so it's facing forward. But the thing is that actually all this will be upwritten um, while we move it along the spline. So these values will really just be for our previous, so it's a bit nicer, honestly, okay? Um, so with that said, we can just go into the event graph. I'm gonna delete the begin play and actor begin overlap. I'm gonna stay with the event tick. As you may know, it basically, it's basically ticked every frame. So it's always ticking. All right, so in here, what we want to do is get out delta seconds and multiply by this by a parameter. And this will be our speed. That the character will move around the spline. So just right click, remote variable. Let's go ahead and do the spline speed, whatever you want to call it, right? And now make sure to compile, select the spline speed, and put it at an initial value, for example, 300. And with that, what we can to do is go ahead and get this and add it into another value. In this case, just right click, and this will be our distance along spline. So basically, this is the current distance that our character will be inside our spline and with that we can now go and set it with our new value there we go so now basically we'll have the new distance now of course we have our new distance but we have to set it to our character so let's go ahead and just get it and what I'm going to do is call this set relative transform node if transform there we go let's put this here now what we need to do is just right click the transform and split it. So now we have the location, rotation and scale separate. And then what we need to do is go ahead and get our spline. And this this node, which is the um, get transform uh, distance along uh, spline. We just plug our distance here and set this to local. And just right click, split it again. So now we can just plug our location and rotation here and leave our transform as it is at one or you can just get the character and get the relative relative um scale 3d2 right so you just plug it in just in case you change it here so also automatically will change here so basically we're keeping the the size the same but applying a location and rotation so with that you will see that actually our you know character should move along this plane now let's go ahead and quickly just mark the speed as uh, with the eye icon so it will be public so we can change it once in here so let's just drag it into the scene and you will see that it's here. So let me just put it a bit up. So it's like that. And let me put it back here. And now can you select my spline and holding out, I can just drag it and then it will create this new scene here. So I can just click, uh, click this to rotate it to hold out, drag it here, move it here, click this like this. So it's rotating like this. And I can just go ahead and do it one more time. Like this, Alt on here, click this, and move like this. So we'll be with that rotation curve. There we go. Um, so now if I hit play, or oh, simulate basically, so my play doesn't spawn, you can see that my character is moving along my, uh, my spline like I wanted. Now you can see that there's a problem, and it is that it isn't facing the way that it's basically going. This is what I explained before about this, which is overridding. So what I wanted to do is basically just go ahead and get the rotation and just basically disconnect it. So hold Alt, click it, right click and split it. Do the same in here, right click, split. So now we have the individual axis separately. So we can just get the Z and then add minus 90 or subtract 90. But just add minus 90 and just drag it into the Z. Now the X and Y will keep the same. But now what the 
uh, location, we need to do the same thing. So hold Alt, right click split, right click split. <laughs> A lot of numbers and notes here, but now let's get our X and Y here. But the same with this, just add in this case is minus 89 and just plug that into the Z. And now with that, um, it should be placed correctly. So now you can see it is correctly rotating and seeing uh, forward and also in the floor. So everything is great. Now let's add the functionality of uh, completing the, the spline and also looping. Okay, so right now if I select my spline, I can go and select the spline component and mark close loop. This will go ahead and just complete the loop as you can see. So it can go ahead and repeat. But right now, if I, for example, set the speed to 700, so it's a quick test, you can see my character will go through the spline, but when it gets into the end, it will stop. So let's go ahead and yet add the, fun uh, the functionality of looping. So let's add a new variable and um, let's say it's loop and it will be a boolean, of course. So it's true or false. And basically in each frame, we'll just ask if uh, it will loop. If so, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our current distance along the spline is greater than our spline length. Okay. If so, spline length, put it here. If so, it will mean that, well, it has finished the loop because it has gone uh, more than the spline distance. If so, what we want to do is just get the distance and you set it back to zero because it will be place at the beginning but because it is the same you know, distance pretty much the same point there's not a notable uh, you know, transition or whatever so now you can see that it will go through all my spline now when it gets to the end okay of course i forgot to enable <laughs> the can loop so you just click the i compile go here and then loop enabled now yes once again click play and you will see how the spline well, the character goes to the spline and we go, it's in a loop and we go through. Now, last step here in this video will be animating the character. So to animate our character, we're just going to go into the spline. And because it is always moving, we can just go and set the, in the character, the animation to be an asset and just have the run animation. And this will be just the, uh, yes, whatever. And now you can see that now it will be moving along the spline. And we go, I've also set the speed to 600, so it's a bit matching better the run animation and you can see that it will go ahead and go in a loop so that's it guys if you found this so helpful i will really appreciate you got the video and subscribe to my channel everything is lagging right now oh my god uh, <laughs> um yeah go ahead and join my discord server and now yes with all i said bye, bye.